Hello viewers, I went on Gran Turismo 7 this week and I found this. Gran Valley Highway 1 is daily race C and we're going to jump into this race in the Ford GT. Now this video, this session is encapsulated by two real emotions. One of utter despair, but also of triumph. Now you saw the opening clip and that clearly demonstrates how bad things got at one point. And over the course of this video, I want to show you the process of how I went from racing very badly, in fact, some of my worst racing that I've ever done, to some of my best. And we're going to go through all of the things I had to learn in order to go through that transition. Now, this is my very first race. I've jumped in. I'm at the back of the pack. A couple of cars going wide here. And I haven't really done any practice laps, any qualifying other than the practice I did last week when this track came out. Now here, we've already gained two positions. We're about to gain one more, courtesy of this Porsche on the left getting quite a slow run onto this bridge. And that's going to be P12, almost into the back of this other Porsche. Thankfully, not quite. And then let's see what we can do through this chicane. Quite a tricky corner, I'm sure you'll agree, for those who have driven this race this week. Not an easy corner to get right, but one is the very crucial corner because it leads out onto the main straight, which is flat out all the way towards turn one. We're going to try and get a good run through the tunnel up behind the Porsche. Now, one of the strengths of the 4GT is its straight line speed, and that is capably being demonstrated right now as we sail by the 911, even before we hit the brakes into the first corner. And so we're trying to capitalize on that. At this point in time, at the start of lap two, I felt quite strong. I felt like my race pace was good. This is lap number four, and this is where it begins to unravel. You can see they're very wide. And that is one of the strictest corner cutting penalty areas in the whole game, I would say. Getting a penalty there was a very, very common occurrence, and it's really easy to do that. This is lap seven, still in P11. So we haven't really made much more ground compared to where we were at the end of lap one. I'm going to try and go for a move here against the McLaren. I go for the right hand side. This is the move I tried to do earlier on the Porsche and with success on this occasion, not quite able to do it. It was a good little battle though, I must say. Did enjoy it as the sun was beginning to set here at Grand Valley. So it's quite a nice dynamic time race. Now, a bit more was about to happen here. This race was quite static for quite a while. It was just me and the McLaren in front for quite a long time without too much battling but here we had a bit of argy bargy with the 4GT meeting the big grass bank which isn't a grass bank at all it's a big sand bank I don't even know what it is who knows we are going to overtake the other car who got a poor run and move up into ninth so two positions that's okay we are up into the uh, in, up inside the top 10 so we are improving this might not seem like such a bad race this one was okay for a first race this is kind of what you can expect move up a couple of positions get a couple of penalties here and there and then just make the old silly mistake like this breaking way too late i don't even know what i was thinking if i was thinking anything my only thought really looking back is that obviously with the dynamic time it gets quite dark on lap 9 and 10 and perhaps that's what caught me out as i was not used to the different visibility then I made this mistake at the beginning of the 10th lap and the final lap. Drifting way too wide and just getting the car a little bit sideways on the brakes. So all in all, about to come through at the end of lap 10 in P10. Getting a penalty here on that chicane, so easy to do. So really just quite a typical race here, I think, of Grand Valley Highway. And so what I needed to do after that was improve my qualifying. And we did that here, 47.8 on my first lap. But we could definitely improve that. Through turn one, it's really about patience here. Onto the power once the tarmac kind of changes, just before the curb changes on the right. We get a nice run down this hill. And there's this chicane here, which can be taken flat, but you do have to be perfect with it. And like we said earlier, it's a very easy place to get a penalty. So getting the line right through there, well, it's a fine line between getting a penalty like we have here and between not getting one. Eventually though, a couple of moments later, setting a 47.4, so it's an improvement, we are getting there, and then a lap after that, 
the time was coming down. But it was this middle sector where things really had to improve. In the Ford GT, this sector two, this middle sector of the lap, is absolutely horrific. This thing handles worse than an aircraft carrier. I really do think that. And for those of you who are trying this car around this track this week, you probably notice the same thing. This car just really hates it. It is a quick car for this track, but you really do have to suffer through that middle sector because it really just does not like the slow speed corners. And so that would be something I would have to improve over the course of time. Now this lap was pretty good. We were, uh, we were a couple of tenths quicker and eventually it was a 46.9 into the 46s, which was a good place to be. And that put me, as you can see, second place on the grid for the second race. And therefore, towards the sharp end, this is where we need to be. Unfortunately, guys, this is one of the worst races I have done in a long time. Really, really bad. I can't quite describe. I mean, you tell me after watching this race just how bad this race was. So the first corner, I mean, that's about as good as it gets. It was a good first corner. Didn't lose position, didn't really gain one, but nice and safe. Pretty much textbook, I would say. And coming down the hill, you see there, playing playing a very uh, naughty game there with the track limits and already getting a penalty. So, okay, that's not ideal. We're going to have to serve that penalty now, as we do. Losing just one position, so that wasn't too bad. We could have easily have lost two, maybe three. But losing one isn't an absolute disaster. We just move down to third. We can try and uh, regain our breath and go again and just try to preserve our position here and just at least try to keep up with the McLaren in front we kept up with the McLaren in front in the previous race it's the same guy albeit we've both set better laps to be towards the front of the pack and it was really through this second sector again where I was just struggling and really just could not get the car to work through that sector of this track with the McLaren just behind I was under pressure and coming down the hill just pushing a little bit too hard here as you know, that's a perfect line. That's exactly what you want to do. So sometimes I was getting it right, sometimes not. And it's the inconsistency which was uh, annoying me. Sometimes I was absolutely bang on, but not every lap. Getting down to a 48-0 on lap 3. Lap 4 was a 48-0, so good consistency. I was going in the right direction. The pace wasn't too bad, the consistency was very good. Uh, but the consistency was good, and to a point. Because coming down here... The consistency was about to go south very quickly. And it's this chicane once again. Very, very difficult to get right. And I just go tiny bit onto the gravel. Maybe three pixels onto the gravel. Before you know it, you're hurtling towards the barrier. Which is suboptimal, I must say. And you can see, I was basically 0.1 seconds away from inducing a massive rage quit. But perhaps I should have done, because what's to come was even worse get the 1.5 second penalty and later on in the lap having to serve it of course that meant I lost p7 and dropped down into eighth okay another setback annoying frustrating and I would have to regroup for the second time in this race and have to go again you see here p6 wasn't too far away so we could finish in the customary position of the super GT channel and it wouldn't be such a disaster to finish in P6, would it? Because, well, you know, you started second, so you should really be finishing on the podium, I would have thought, from there. And I shouldn't be back in eighth. But this is where my race is about to unravel. But not only mine, the two cars in front. As I go for this move on the right-hand side, in towards turn one, it's quite a late move. Before you know it, bang. I am now a murderer. Turns out I'm going to be on death row for the rest of my days as I have wiped out two innocent victims into the wall. First, the McLaren, who gracefully rejoins the circuit with a 0.5 second penalty. And then the Ford GT, now with a six second penalty for my misdemeanor. So I've absolutely murdered them. Let's take a look. And it doesn't make for better viewing in another angle. Absolute filth as I wipe them out. Think of the McLaren. They're approaching turn one, everything's fine, until all of a sudden, bang, they have been annihilated from absolutely nowhere and have been sent to the Shadow Realm. 
From the cinematic camera, it looks even worse. It really does look bad. I kind of just sat there sort of thinking, oh my goodness, I have just killed a couple of people. And that is not good. Now eventually, we do get going once again. The guy in the Ford GT says, why? And the McLaren driver uttered the immortal words, put it to video. And that's exactly what I'm doing here, guys. I've put it a video and you are now watching said video. Eventually, after not getting ahead of the guy who's serving these six second penalty, I dropped down into last place. And I wanted to hide in the pit lane and not have to do the rest of the race. But as you can see, Grand Valley is currently bugged. And so there is no such thing as a pit stop around this track. It just drives you all the way through. And even for that, I got a three second penalty. And all I really could think to do at this point was just drive off the edge of a cliff. And so after a completely disastrous race, I bought it home one and a half minutes off of the lead in what can only be described as a shocking race. Even this guy was clapping. I do not know why. It was an absolute disaster. And so I did not want to stare Grand Valley in the face. And so I turned off my PS5. A couple of hours later, turning it back on. And I think this is sometimes the best thing you can do. There are days where you just drive like an absolute fool. And the best thing you can do is spare yourself and spare everyone by just turning off the console and coming back later. And that's exactly what I did. And my first port of call was qualifying. I clearly just did not have the consistency that I wanted. I could set good laps periodically, but the consistency just wasn't there. My first four laps here were mid to low 47s. The consistency was good, bit of a mistake must be said but this was a trial where we were trying to improve our overall pace and consistency at the same time i really needed to improve both if i wanted to stand a chance of a successful result the penalty there through the middle sector and it's this middle sector i really had to improve but it seemed like i was making too many mistakes here you can see retry after retry lots of penalties lots of mistakes but we were getting there it's this middle sector where I really had to get better. I really had to get good, to use uh, the, the, the important phrase. And I was telling myself, get good, multiple times. And the Ford GT, as we discussed earlier, is not a car that likes the middle sector. It's, it basically has an allergy to that sector of the track. And I worked out through this sequence of corners that I was just taking the wrong line. I just was not taking the right line at all. Just trying to be too clever with a wide line. It wasn't working. And this is the good thing about having a ghost in front of you. The ghost in front is that of Mr. MCA with a 148.8, a low 0.8 that is. And so I felt like it was a realistic ghost that I could keep up with and perhaps beat if I set a perfect lap. Now it took me until this lap here. This was maybe about 45 minutes into the session and I was fairly close to it. Over the line we go, going to be a 46.995, one thousandth of a second slower than my PB. And so I was back to a point where, okay, we're really close now. If I can just improve by a tenth here or there, then we're good. We're going to go and improve our lap time. So again here, this is the line that just doesn't work. Trying to be too clever of the of, on that corner with a wide line in, you just lose a car length or two. And so it just isn't worth it. Now this lap that I'm about to finish is a 46.8 and the next lap is going to be quicker so let's take you through these laps so looking towards the 300 board on the left and you're going to go straight in towards the corner being patient mid turn here and then getting good drive down the hill now this following left right left should be flat out you might need to have a slight lift in this car if you get it dead right turning in on that shadow you should be able to just about get it flat braking on the 400 board then turning in on the 100, getting really close to the inside and you get really good rotation when you do that. Onto the power in first gear and driving off. And then we're into sector two. This is where things get really tricky. Driving roughly on the yellow line in the middle. Come back uh, for a late apex on the power. Maximize track width there. Downshift, bit of gravel on the right ideally. And then off the power 
downshift and that really gives you the rotation that's what i was noticing in this car at least you come off the power the car wants to turn a bit more and if you downshift as well sometimes you can initiate a bit more rotation and so i was just learning to take a better line through here on the power just before the change of tarmac onto the bridge and this is a much better lap if you can get in the 109s at this split then you're good 109.4 on this occasion and so we're on for a a 146 lap time if I can keep this through to the end. I lose maybe a car length there on the way in through that corner. Getting a good line on the exit of this one. Onto the power, maximizing the track width. And we do not get a penalty, thankfully. It was really close though. And it's going to be just under a tenth quicker than my previous lap. And so the consistency and the speed was now coming. It did take me a good hour to get this uh, lap time. Coming up to the finish, the lap time is 46.777 and that at the time was good enough for 36th in the world so not too bad and uh, let's jump into the next race now this is where we were really beginning to show what i can do the earlier races were an absolute disaster and it's just horrific to have to watch them back they were that bad so this first race you know it's this is where things get really important because yes it's very very well and good setting a good qualifying time but you have to be able to do it in the race now on, on my first lap here setting um getting a penalty uh, max power got a penalty on the following lap and so i retook the lead but from there i didn't really look back i was under some pressure for the next couple of laps but i felt like okay i just need to get in the groove and not think about the car behind too much and just uh, just do what i learned in the practice laps which was just not overdrive the car and this is the main takeaway that i would say from this session was in the early races i was pushing way too hard to be perfect and as a result i was making mistakes and getting penalties and so from this point onwards i decided okay if i'm going to go wide if i'm going to get a penalty i was going to back off slightly i'm going to drive 10 percent safer in the name of not getting too many penalties and not making too many mistakes we did get some penalties like this one but um, it wasn't too bad. The consistency was overall very good. Uh, getting a penalty there. The guy behind also got a penalty. And so by the end of lap 8, uh, the gap was uh, over 3 seconds. So I was in a comfortable lead. Things were going well. I was in the 47s most laps, or at least half the time. Setting a 47.6, which was my fastest lap in a race to this point. And later on finishing the race in an 1808.9 total time which was pretty good and if you look back at the first race of this video the race was won with an 1808.7 and so i was on good pace i felt like i was getting there i think this race here might be one of the best i've done if uh, you look back further in this video i did one of the worst performances ever this one i think one of my best so starting on pole first lap nice and solid pulling away from the guy behind Lap number two, going to be a 47.8. Good consistency here, 47.8 again. Next lap, 47.6. Next lap is going to be a 47.9. Next lap was going to be a 47.8. And then just after that, 47.7. Then the next lap, 47.8. Then the next lap was going to be a 47.6. This consistency was absolutely unbelievable and I really just could not believe just how fast and consistent I was, I was being. Earlier on in the day I could barely get into the 48s and now I was in the 47s consistently every lap and no penalties. In this race I had no penalties to this point and this showed just how, how valuable that practice time was. Being nice and clinical, not overdriving the car and just really getting into a really nice groove. So it's this middle sector which is where things are really tough and I, I was guilty of looking at the split timer here so I made a bit of a mistake through this corner. There wasn't the quickest line, not enough for a penalty though so we just continue and uh, we're going to try to do an entire race with all 47s lap times which I think would be a great performance. So into the long left, so really about letting the car breathe, a bit of... Um, bit of uh, coasting mid corner to let the car rotate and then onto the power before the change of tarmac there onto the bridge and that's a good point to get on the power 
again, let's take a look at this split time. It's a 110 flat. So we're on course, I would say, for a 47, but we do have to be quite perfect through this final sector. And unfortunately, well, it's not quite going to be perfect because with this darkness, it doesn't help. It is quite hard to see. You see they're just taking a bit too much curb. And on the exit here, just getting on the power a little bit too early and just, just grazing the sand, which gives me a very unfortunate 0.5 second penalty. That's my first penalty in that entire race. And so it was a bit disastrous. But the one consolation that I really want to hammer home here is as we finish, we're going to pause the video. Just pause it there and take a look at the lap times because it's all 47s from lap 2 to 10, all between a 46.9 and a 47, sorry, 47.9 and a 47.6, all within three tenths of a second. Yes, there was a penalty in that final lap, but if anything, I lost time because of it. And so we improve our total race time to an 18 05.0 and that was one of my finest races 95th race win on that account but the question you're obviously asking yourself right now is how does scott speed figure in all of this so what i did was i logged on to my american account and i gave myself three laps to try to set a quick qualifying time 47.2 46.9 and then finally crossing the line in a 46.7. So it only took me three laps to match my PB on my main account. As you can see, they're very close indeed between my two accounts. Scott Chegg just doesn't miss. This man is the GOAT, we all know that. Let's see how he performs then in this first race. Now, annoyingly, my first lap was a 48.0 because I wanted to do an entire race of 47s. But you see, my, my fastest potential was going down, 47.4. And again, it was just through sheer consistency for this middle sector, especially. One penalty during that race and a total time of an 1804.7. So my fastest race to date. With one final opportunity to try to go quicker. Let's see if I can do it. By this point in time, it was two in the morning. And so I was quite tired, but I was very determined to go even faster and try to do that entire race with all 47s. And I think it's definitely possible, I could definitely do it, um, with no penalties as well. And as we come down the hill, let's take a look. As we turn into this right hand, it's such an annoying corner to get right, because you are right on the limit, and you see here, playing it very close, playing a very dodgy game, playing um, a bit of roulette with the track limits. Thankfully on this occasion, I was pixel perfect, not getting a penalty, but how about lap two? I was not about to be so lucky. As we go, oh, I mean, it's, it's minimal there, but it is a penalty. We were beyond the line. Very frustrating, as I was, again, perhaps trying to be too perfect again. Now, we did a 48-6. We did have to serve a penalty on that lap. But here, look, 47-6. Uh, We're going to take a look at this entire lap here, because um, after lap two, which was the one with the penalty, we got a 47.9, 47.4, 47.4, 47.3, and then a 47.6 uh, on that previous lap. And so this lap was my best. This is the best lap I did all day. And it did seem to be getting quicker and quicker for me. Good rotation through that hairpin, a really good line. And then let's take a look at the middle sector, the, the horrible sector of the lap keeping the car under control. And what I felt I was doing earlier on in the day was just turning in too much and overworking the car. And this one, I was just being a little bit more delicate on the steering wheel. And so a lesson I would give here really is just, just pay attention to the things you're doing wrong. And for me, it happened to be just taking a couple of the wrong lines through here, for example. Also just working the car too much, braking it a bit too late, trying to be too perfect trying to take everything dead right and that isn't the way for me the way was to actually tone it down a little bit be consistent first and then build up the speed and that really seemed to pay dividends for me and so through the chicane here getting a really good straight line run on the exit on the power perfectly that was a really well done corner and it's going to give us some really good straight line speed here and i think that's really crucial to the, those last couple of tenths on this lap so crossing the line is going to be a 47.2, which honestly is about as fast as you're going to see 
around this track. The guy behind Cooper does a 47-0 and he's sort of world-class level pace on this game. And so I was kind of really happy to be in that sort of echelon of pace on this on this track. It took me all day to get there. I was really happy with it. This race time, 1803. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts. Have an amazing day and I shall see you next time. Goodbye.